In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Plex, the ultimate media server software that lets you access your movies, TV shows, music, pictures, and more from anywhere. Whether you want to watch your favorite shows on your big screen TV, listen to your playlists on your phone, or share your photos with your friends, Plex has you covered. Plus, Plex also offers thousands of free streaming titles, so you'll never run out of things to watch. Sounds awesome, right? Well, stick around, because I'm going to show you how to set up Plex, how to add your media, and how to customize your Plex experience. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're back at the Unraid desktop. To get started, go ahead and jump over to Apps. In the search box, type in Plex, and you'll find here that there's a couple different options to choose from. I'm a big fan of bin hex containers, so we're going to focus on those. You'll see here you've got Plex and then Plex Pass. The Plex Pass is the premium account. Let me show you what that has to offer. I won't cover everything here, but I'll go over some of the highlights. For people that really like television, TV shows, one of the nice things here is you can skip the intros or skip the out credits, which doesn't seem like a whole big deal, but it's kind of nice to not have to sit there and watch all that extra stuff. Password protection, that's basically just a sleep feature. Rewind on resume. This is really nice too. If you uh, pause to get up to go to the bathroom or something, get a snack, come back, instead of having to manually rewind a little bit, you can set it to uh, rewind at uh, whatever interval that you set up. It gives you DVR access so that you can record stuff off your local broadcast. And if you have recorded stuff from the DVR, it allows you to skip commercials. The last nice thing here is that it allows you to download the shows to an offline device, you know, such as a cell phone or something like that, if you're going to be out of internet access. For movie lovers, Allows you to skip the credits. You know, some of these movies nowadays, the end credits can be pretty long, so it's nice to be able to skip that. Once again, the Rewind on Resume feature, which is fantastic, allows you to have multiple editions. So if you have, like, let's say, Director's Cut or Extended Release version, then you can have multiple editions in the same library. It gives you download access and then lots of extras and trailers. And if you're into music, it's got some stuff for you, too. It's just not only a media player, PlexAmp offers a variety of different features, allowing you to mix up your media, play sonically related tracks, and a bunch of other features. And once again, it gives you the power to download the stuff to your offline devices. And what does this cost? Because there's always a cost, right? As they say, just $4.99 a month, forever. But if you scroll down to the very bottom here, there's a monthly subscription, there's an annual subscription, or a lifetime. A monthly cost at $4.99 isn't too bad if you just want to test it out. But, you know, if you do the math on that, that's $60 a year, so you might as well just go the annual. But then again, if you're going to go the annual, you might as well just get the lifetime because it's, you know, three years worth. And trust me, you'll use Plex for more than three years. You can start with the free version and always upgrade later. They do have sales every now and then, so if you just keep an eye on it, I'm sure you'll find a discount. I believe I got mine for around $80. We'll be setting up the free version this time just so you can see how it works. All right, so back to your Unraid. We're going to do the bin hex Plex. So click install. And then for host path two here, this is your media location. So you want to select that. And in a previous video, we had set up a media folder. Click on media and then click off there. That's the main thing you need to worry about. So go ahead and scroll to the bottom and hit apply. All right, go ahead and hit done now. Then go back to your Docker tab. And then in there, you'll see the bin hexplex container. It should be started and running. Once you go over to the auto start, turn that on, and then click on the Binhex Plex icon, go to Web UI, and we'll start setting it up. All right, at this point, go ahead and sign in with the account that you created. And if you haven't signed up, it allows you to create an account on the fly. Since this is a new demo test account, I'm going to just go ahead and put in an email I created earlier. All right, once signed in, hit got it. It's trying to sell you the Plex Pass feature, so just go ahead and close out of that. And then you can name your server whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm just going to leave it on demo. There's an option here to allow you to access the media outside of your house, which is kind of nice if you're going out and about want to access stuff on your phone or you know at a friend's house. I've used it a lot at hotel rooms. As long as you have internet, it seems to work. All right, now we have to add our library. So click Add Library. We'll do Movies first. Select Movies, and then hit Next. And you'll browse for a media folder. So as you can see here, I don't have one listed yet. So we'll go back here. We'll hit cancel here. Go back to our network shares. In this case, it's going to be backslash backslash. And then the IP address of your server. And then slash media. In here, you need to create a new folder. I'm going to call this one movies. 
I'll create another one for TV shows. And then I've already got one in here for music and one for photos. So we'll just leave it like that. Go back to Plex here. Now we want to browse for media folder. Go to your media folder and then select movies and hit add. Then hit add library. We can hit add library again and add a TV show. Browse for media folder again. It's under media and then TV and then add. Add library. We'll add another one for music and then another one for photos. Music. Next. Browse. Music. Add that one and then add one more. Add library. Photos. Photo sounds good. Browse for media folder. Media. And photos. Then add. Add library. Once you've got your library selected, go ahead and hit next. And just so you know, you can do multiple libraries. If you've got several different movie categories, like let's say you've got movies, you've got documentaries, 3D movies or something of that sort, you can add multiple libraries. Just go back, hit add library, hit movies again, change the name like 3D movies, hit next, browse for media, and then you just select whatever folder that is. I don't have any right now, so I'm not going to worry about that. But once you're done with your selection, hit next and then hit done. These pin sources here, it shows you items that are going to appear on your library. So you can have watch lists, movies, the TV shows, music, photos, and then it has live TV options, which I don't have a TV tuner. So I'll remove that one. Movies and shows, that's free stuff. So once you have your item selected, go ahead and hit finish setup. That's the basics for getting Plex installed. It's pretty quick and easy. So on the home screen here, it shows you recently added media. So we've got recently added music, recently added photos, and then these are Plex picks, things that they think that I would like to watch. Binge-worthy shows, these are all free streaming. On the left-hand side, you've got a watch list. You can create a watch list and then have those items added here. On your movies, it says it's empty. And that's right, because there's nothing in there yet. Same with TV shows. Since they're brand new directories, there's nothing in there. So let's go back. Let's go back to our shared folder on the server. You'll notice there's just a few random files here. I got some public domain media and copied those on here just so I'd have something to test with. It's a Wonderful Life from 1946 would be a movie. So we'll drag that into the movies folder. Night of the Living Dead from 1968. Once again, movie. Hit OK. The Beverly Hillbillies. That would be a TV show from <laughs> back in the day. And Abbott and Costello, Africa Screams, 1949 looks like. Drag that in there. All right, go back to our server here. And just refresh the page here, and it's popping up with the select your favorite streaming services, which is something I forgot to mention. You can tie in your different streaming services that you have. Like if you've got an account, let's say, with you know, Amazon here. You can sign in with Amazon Prime or Amazon Video, and you can have that library added onto your Plex Media Library. So go through here, select what you use, then you can hit Save Changes, and you can have it start syncing. All right, so since we've added media to the folders now, let's go ahead and have Plex reanalyze. If you click on the little wrench in the top right corner, it opens Settings. Scroll down to where it says Libraries, Manage Libraries. Click on Libraries, then click on Scan Library Files. It'll go through and analyze the different libraries that you've added. There you go, it's all set. So go back to your home in the top left. Now go to your movies. And you'll see that the movies appear there. Under TV shows, same thing. And it defaults to the recommended library, but you can also just click on the library file itself. One of the things I really love about Plex is that it pulls in the media image art and the descriptions for all the titles. So if we go in there, it'll show you the cover art for the show, gives you a brief synopsis of what it's about. And then if you go into the season, It'll show you the cast and the crew members, directors, producers, that kind of information. And then it shows you all the episodes that you have. Once again, it shows you the title of that episode. And if you go into one of these, it shows you a brief description of that episode. And then if you hit play or you just click on the box there, it should start playing automatically. Just like that. To back out of it, you click on the stop button and go back to your home. Movies works the same way. You can go into the movie itself, shows you the cover art, brief description of it, cast and crew, reviews. 
And let's say you've got a large library and you want to add this to your watch list. If you go into the item, you can click on this little bookmark icon here and it'll add it to the watch list. You can also mark it as watched if you've previously watched this and you just want to update your library. You can just click that and it'll be watched. And if you click it again, it'll mark it as unwatched. You can edit here and on the more option, you'll have access to a bunch of other handy utilities. If we go back to our movie list here, you notice that this first one here, the Abbott and Costello Africa Screams one, it's just pulled a random image out of the film rather than cover it and there's no description. If we go back to our root folder here, where the movies are stored, you'll notice that these here, It's a Wonderful Life, is in its own folder and it's named properly. So Plex is able to distinguish what movie it is. This one, however, is not named in its proper format. So we'll clean this up. The name of the title or the title of the movie is Africa Screams. And then the year is correct. And Plex prefers that it's in its own folder. So we will copy this, create a new folder. I'll paste that name on there. Then we'll put the file inside of that. Now if we go back to Plex, go back to the settings, libraries, and have it scan the library files again, it should fix that. So we'll go back up to our home, movies, and there you go. Proper image art and the description and all the cast and characters. Now, if you've already got a large library, going back and fixing all that stuff seems like a big pain, and it is. But there are other programs that handle that for you, such as radar and sonar. And we'll talk about those in an upcoming video. They take out a lot of the heavy lifting, automating a lot of that stuff for you. So we'll go back to home here. Let's go down to TV shows. I forgot to mention there's also a rating option here too. One of the nice features with Plex is if you watch a show, you watch the complete episode. And I'll just skip through this here. I'll let that finish up. And it wants to start playing the next one right away. You can turn that off there, or you can just hit the stop button to stop it. Now you'll see in the top corner, it'll have a little green check mark indicating that that episode has been watched. All right, so if we go back to home now, there'll be a new option in the top corner that says continue watching. And that allows you to pick up from where you left off. In this case, it's on season one of episode two. So if we go down under music now, the music library acts the same way. However, the uh, artist that I downloaded was Chopin, just because it's free and in the public domain. But it's not a known album, so it doesn't know how to pull in the, the proper information for it. But it still allows it to be played. But the same rules apply. If you name it properly and it's in there, Plex will discover it properly and have all the artist information and the track names listed. And under Photos, it just imports the photos that you have in there. And since I just have a bunch of raw photos of my you know, cat and dog in here, it's just displaying those. But you can separate things by folders. And uh, our dog Apollo here was bad. He didn't get anything this Christmas. Next down, we got movies and shows that are on Plex. You can just pick something, and hit play, and it plays. Once you've got Plex set up, it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. Using Plex in a web browser allows you to access your media pretty much anywhere, which you can also use dedicated devices to view your Plex library. So on Plex's website here, they've got a list of some of their devices that they work with. You can use it in your browsers, such as Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Safari. Pretty much any browser though, really. Mobile apps for Android and iOS. For tablets, once again, Android and the iPad OS. Desktops, laptops, Macs, Windows, Linux, pretty much everything. Some smart TVs have the Plex app built into them. You can get streaming devices such as Amazon Alexa, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, Chromecast, portals from Facebook, Roku, Sonos, and even gaming consoles like PlayStation and Xbox. I personally use Chromecast with Google TV built into it, and I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in picking up one of those. I reviewed a few of them in the past, and by far the Chromecast I think is the easiest to use 
There's not really any commercials or any kind of ads that pop up in the middle of everything. It's just a pleasant experience. However, I'm curious, what do you use? Leave a comment below and let me know. So there you have it. Plex is installed, set up and running. It's pretty easy to use. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. And I'll see you in the next one.